Hey, yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? I'm Brian. And I'm Monica. And welcome to our podcast, Backspace Nomads, where we share our nerd for gaming, movies, and all the dork in between. This is episode 46 of the podcast, and we're recording it on a February 11th, 2018. Fuck and yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick show notes before we get to the actual show. Gamers is still going on. Backspacenomads.com forward slash gamers. We're just going to throw that out there. Go there, enlist with your email, await future orders. It's coming down the pipeline. Um, we have a calligraphy written. Is that a word? Calligraphy written? Yeah. yeah. A letter written in calligraphy. It is in the works. We paid for this with real monies. USD. And that means that I should receive this freaking letter in the next upcoming few days here. And then I get to send it off to Gavin. So it's the one I read last podcast. Um, it's going to be mm. official. I hope it's beautiful. I hope he reads it. So, yeah. so if you want to see a photo, we're going to be sending it out through the email list on from the gamers. So backspace nomads.com for gamers. Also, viewer mail. We're looking for viewer mail. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to share with us, backspace nomads at gmail.com. Hit us up. Um, we'll read it on air uh, to our delight, hopefully. But We've been away for a week. So, Monica, what have you been up to? Well, um, outside of... I know what I'm doing on Monday. Oh, Can yeah? I tell you? I might go to a town hall and yell at people. Oh, future Monica is going to yell at people. Yeah, I've never yelled at anyone at a town hall before. But uh, one of my friends was telling me about the situation that she's really uncomfortable with with the local mm -hmm. university. And I was like, mm -hmm. let... And she's like, yeah, they're going to be talking about it on Monday. I'm like, let's go fucking yell. Yeah, I don't even know really what's going on, but I'll fucking stand up and yell. I'll yeah, I'll yell some stuff. But can you this bring letter, a sign? I'll bring a sign. Okay. It might Let's not have it. anything written on it, but it's like I said, I don't really exactly know what this is about. But I'll hold it up. Yeah, and, yeah. and chant. I'm holding a sign. It's gonna be great. Um, and but this last week, I actually went out and bought Monster Hunter World. Ooh. And, and I've been playing that on PS4, like a little console gamer. I like went out and bought the Switch. Now I got Monster Hunter Where World on PS4. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I haven't <laughs> played on my PC in like a week and a half, and it feels fucking weird, man. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, so I haven't been able to play any multiplayer on Monster Hunter World yet. Mm-hmm. I feel like the tutorial process was one of the worst things that could ever happen to me. <laughs> Why? Because it requires a lot of attention and there's a lot of <laughs> reading. And if you don't read these things that they tell you, you don't know what's going on in the game because it's a very complicated game. Almost like and it's a tutorial. <sighs> But there's so much tutorial. The tutorial lasts like an hour. It's an oh, no. hour long tutorial. I felt like I was living my worst nightmare. Now, granted, I have not been held back because my gaming mm. prowess is so <laughs> strong. That oh, even it? though I don't pay attention to the tutorial, I somehow bumble my way through beating every monster that I come across. You're just so good. However... The game has yelled at me and said, you don't have stamina. You have to cook a steak. And I was like, I don't fucking know how to do that. I just have to beat this monster without any stamina, which after running around cursing at my mon at my at my TV, uh -huh. not my monitor. I'm not playing PC game. Whole Come new, on, Monica, whole, get it whole together. New world. Whole new world. Whole new, I don't even know these Sitting terms. On your couch. It's like a tutorial just to know what a TV is at this point. Do you just like look at your controller? Like, how do you hold this? Dude, what, you, I'm not joking. This up? I'm not joking. I haven't played on my PS4 in so long that I was just like, this is, there's more buttons here than I remember. <laughs> 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 oh. I, I, this game does make me yell, uh -huh. um, which is rare for a game to do, but it's because I don't know what I'm doing because I don't like, pay any attention to the tutorial. So, they're like, cook a steak so you can get stamina. I was like, I don't fucking know how to do that. I'm like, yeah, it's like I'm in the car. I'm like, ah, I 
can't you get over here in the fast lane? You're supposed to be over there, slow ass. And <laughs> I yell at this thing. I have yeah. I am it's so frustrating, but I am fucking killing it. Yeah. I haven't died once. I I like make it. I'm real good at dodging. That's all you got. If you're not good at anything else, you gotta be good at dodging. Mm-hmm um yeah it's been tough though it's been tough dude this tutorial it's insane how's matt how's matt mercer's voice it's good but the the characters the characters though are not good i I kind of want to kill everybody like they're so annoying i'm like you i would be friends with you if i was 14 years old but you're supposed to be an adult in a like in this like world. You're supposed to be an adult. Yeah. Why are you talking to me like this? Well, it's, you're they 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 made the game so for fourteen year olds to love it, right? You're entering their their world now, Monica. We're we're not the <sighs> we're not the demographic anymore. They've moved on from us. All right. My brain hurts. My brain hurts. Don't say <laughs> these things to me. Don't say these things to me. Yeah, they're like really happy. Like all this, all these, cr- this crazy shit's going on around. And it's like very mm-hmm. stereotypical. Like, we need you to go and kill this pukey pukey. Go <laughs> and kill the pukey pukey. You can do it. And then the girl's like, oh my God, you're going to go and kill the pukey pukey. I'm so excited about this to happening. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't even fucking know how to cook a steak. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's how you get the steak. You got to kill the pukey pukey first. It's awful. Uh, but I'm I'm powering my way through it, man. I'm powering my way through right. it. I'm impressive to myself. I'm impressed with you. Thanks. You're taking How's on new your... challenges in life. Yeah, I am. I'm re- I'm wrecking shit, and I'm yeah. gonna go to this town hall on Monday. And I'll let you guys know if I actually do it. If I do it, I'm going, and I'm gonna fucking say some weird shit in this town hall. It's gonna be great. I hope it ends up on like public television. <laughs> if if it's going good, you don't know what to say. Can you just go up to the podium like you got something to say that's important to the topic and just start talking about gamers? Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate enlistments <laughs> to gamers. Not spelled normally. It's G-A-M-R-S. R-S. And like pull out the calligraphy letter. Yeah. Like I have a letter to the president of... <laughs> Valve. Valve. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Valve. Uh, and just read the letter to them. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm loving it. I don't care. I, who cares at this point? Like You're my so life's involved. so active. Yeah, I am active. I don't know what I'm going to be active in, but who I'm going to be active. My life. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like being That's stoked a, when I actually like take the stairs, you know? It's like I, I was active. Oh. I have never stoked. Well, let me tell you, it's a fucking rush. <laughs> it's a r- you Just haven't lived junkie over there. You haven't lived until you've taken the stairs, my man. <laughs> yeah, I see an escalator. I'm just like, thank God. <laughs> I was not looking forward to that second floor. You gotta do it. You gotta try it out. It's a it is wild. It's How was wild. your week? How was your um, week? Week's good. Um just being a nerd, playing a lot of Fortnite. Um hot hot changes in the game. Epic stir in the pot, a lot of people mad. Um, just about the way the game shoots and all that, which is seeing the outrage is just hilarious because this is the first time I've been back to a, like a committed community who follows like patch notes and stuff. It's been mm-hmm. a while, and just seeing like people's outrage because it's so the outrage is like so fast now because there's Twitter, and back when I was like a wild WoW player or whatever, and I like you know really read patch notes, no one was on Twitter, no one cared. And so it's just, it's so interesting to me to see like the waves of like hate and then kind of acceptance and like this is kind of great. And then it's all of a sudden back into hate. So the closest that. thing I feel like I have to that, because obviously if I can't get through a tutorial, I can't get through patch notes, but um, it, 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 I don't know. I feel like the closest thing I have to that is when like Facebook changes and I'm like, they put that button where now? Oh, it's the worst. This is infuriating. <laughs> I fuck Facebook. I'll never use it again. And in reality, I probably don't really use it again because it yeah. kind of sucks now. But you're like, it's that like Gandalf meme where you walk in, you're like, I've been here before. <laughs> yeah. And it's like yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, so other than that, uh, I checked out Disney Epcot's uh, Art and Film Festival today which I only bring up because they they have these like art 
huts or whatever tents and a lot of the times they bring in these like people who paint like nerdy stuff like star wars and there are these huge like amazing works of art that are like star wars pieces and i just sat there and like nerded out to like tie fighters and stuff being lit with all this paint uh like big han solo pieces like prints and originals i see one that was nine thousand five hundred dollars who buys that but god bless them you know what i mean you would no i, mean, I would not no. <laughs> no so um that was a ton of fun today in my life uh i wish i could see more like uh fine art for like nerdy stuff i think yeah. it's just like weird sub genre that's like kind of starting to break out now mm-hmm. and i'm all about it i'm, I'm, I'm loving it there's uh, actually um an art opening near me where the guy does like 8-bit art but it's ooh. really wild Mm-hmm. And I thought about going because he sells his paintings for a couple grand each. God damn. I was like, man, I can paint that. <laughs> you want to just doing squares? You squares can just in. go start doing something new. I'll paint your paintings for you. You can only give me 30% ish. And then nice. good. You know? yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, so what else happened when I was paying attention to? Oh, SpaceX. Oh, the SpaceX launch. The SpaceX. Oh. Um, when was it? Like the eighth to like last Thursday, they mm-hmm. SpaceX launched the largest rocket ever made on Earth, the Falcon Heavy, into the outer atmosphere off to the asteroid belts and stuff, carrying yeah. a 2008 cherry red Tesla Roadster, courtesy of Elon Musk. What a baller. <laughs> no, for real though, the thing is like this had such a an amazing response to it. And in, mm-hmm. in, in the best way possible, I feel like, okay, so he's, here's some like legitimate quotes from my friends. Okay. I feel like nothing I do day to day matters after watching this launch. Another what? quote, I cried. And yeah. this is from a very burly man who yeah. cried watching the launch. Did he really cry? He cried. He said he uh, teared up. He teared up. Okay. Um, and I think in general, like, it's awesome, especially since there's so much defunding that happened mm-hmm. has happened with, like, space exploration in general. It's yeah. it's really exciting to see the, the, the excitement around science, you know? Yep. It's really awesome. Um, but my response was like, I actually didn't cry, which I normally feel like if anyone else is crying on Earth, I might be crying as well. So this was shocking to me that okay. I was not part of the cry team. And in fact, I'm like, maybe I'm really changing into something. I'm evolving, Brian. Ooh, you're but getting stronger. You're I'm getting this. stronger. Playing yeah. consoles, you're drying I'm, up. I'm, Just... like, I'm drying up. <laughs> But I I didn't cry, but I did get some like feels. Okay. As far as like I've got some kind of long arm hair. And so when I get goosebumps, it like raises up like a couple inches off my arm. And that happened. So that was cool. The person next to you feels it. They're like, yeah, they're like, whoa, what is this? It's like a sea of enemies just reaching out, trying to look for their next meal. Um, okay. So what, you, what was your, uh, how did you feel about it? I don't know. I feel like, you know, Tesla's just showboating. Uh, great publicity stunt. I just don't get all the hubbub about launching rockets off. I, I kind of miss the old way we used to do. I miss the shuttle program. You know what I mean? I. Uh, what do you miss about the shuttle program? Well, I'm a Florida boy. And mm-hmm. I, I've i seen the space shuttles land on a runway, right? Mm-hmm. I'm from a generation where we saw a space shuttle come in from outer space where stars are. It came in through an atmosphere and then landed like a plane on a runway in front of you. And now we're just getting excited because we're shooting rockets off. What year is this? We know how to shoot rockets off. We've been doing it since the 30s. All right. We're thirsty, man. Uh, There's not enough money into science. We need more money into science. And then... I see all these people bragging like, oh, well, this is the first car shot off into space. I'm sorry. You just want to hurt the moon landers feelings. That thing had four wheels. It's driving around on the moon. 
It actually had people driving it, not just some fake astronaut dummy looking cool in front of the Earth. Yeah. I just, I don't get all the commotion. Like, I, like, sure. Like, we need the sciences. We need the hype and stuff. But don't act like we haven't done this before. Yeah. we got stuff out at Pluto, okay? Yeah, that's We're true. We're Pluto. We're not just skimming Mars. Right. SpaceX. Yeah. Motherfucking SpaceX. I don't know. I think that it's good, but I do agree that we have to we have to like know what we're getting out of this and it, right. and like the hype is great the, the the science is great you know like but where are we actually taking it and is it really just art photos of a man in a car yeah you know uh, it felt like an mtv commercial it really did <laughs> i think it's in front of it right. yeah I still think that's awesome, though. I love I, science is so important. Our exploration, humanity's exploration is just we need that. That's who we are. We want to create. We're creators. And yeah. I'm glad that we're continuing. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying, where it's like we've seen this shit before. I just think that we're a little starved for it. Imagine if you hadn't had sex with your wife for like eight years. And then all of a sudden she was just like, I'm ready, honey. It's like, that's going to be the coolest fucking sex you've had. Yeah. You know, and it would also ever. only take like, you know, 45 seconds. And it wouldn't have to be that good. No. Yeah. You would just be like, whoa, whoa. mind blown. This was amazing. Well, I, I'm glad you're bringing up uh, sex because great segue, Monica. Let's actually oh. start the show and jump into the things we would talk about. Yes, uh, sex, sex. Let's talk about sex. What the fuck is going on with T Quentin Tarantino, dude? He's a dirty dog, dude. He's a dirty dog. He's he's the we next. We got one Harvey to step Weinstein, and he was like, "Dude, I knew Harvey. I knew Harvey did some things. Mm. He did some things, and I'm I should have stepped in. It would have been good for me to step in, but I didn't, and I'm very upset with myself for that. And everyone's like, "Oh, Quentin." What a hero. Well, Quentin, you're so honest. You're so <laughs> honest. Maybe a little too honest, Quentin Tarantino. Maybe a little too honest with yourself because, uh, and I say this with like great sadness because Quentin Tarantino is the director that made me like fall in love with films. You know, like seeing his stuff, I was like, a film can make you feel a certain type of way. Like this is different. And uh, you put me on to some information from Quentin Tarantino on the Howard Stern show. I did. So Quentin went on and kind of out of himself as like kind of a suck it, like he like is okay with like a lot of the the stories and whatever i would go ahead and say he's fine with it because he's an he was on the howard storm yeah he is an enabler like he might mm -hmm. not participate in himself but he's like dude you you own this yeah this yeah. belongs to you you're the king that's the quentin tarantino that's he my voice for you're the king harvey weinstein <laughs> you're the king this because be he money. was so good. On, yeah, he was on the Howard Stern show talking about Roman um, Pol Polanski, Pol Polanski. 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 He was talking, and he was saying how how Roman like basically raping a thirteen year old, which is illegal just to have sex with a thirteen year old when you're an old sa sacky son of a bitch. Yeah. But beyond that, or he drugged a young eighteen year old. He, he drugged this girl. And gave her alcohol, and then her story is one thing, and his story is, oh, well, she wanted it, whatever. But the thing that's fucking crazy is Quentin's on the Howard Stern show talking about how how he, um, how she wanted it, how she was mm -hmm. a party girl. I'm like, man, at 13, like, yeah, I had some friends that were active, but, like, yeah. we, they were all, fuck we were all fucking idiots. We yep. were all idiots. We were active, like some of my friends were sexually active at 13. Sure. And you know what we were doing on the weekends? Hanging mm. out in fucking bedroom, playing girl talk. That stupid fucking thing where you're calling, uh, dialing your boyfriend. Oh, I know girl talk. That's an old That's game. Sister. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but like, we still played shit like that. You can't be getting yeah. raped by some old man on the weekends and then be playing girl talk. That shit doesn't add up. I don't play girl talk now. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's an innocence there. There's a level yep. of innocence there that was totally stripped. It's just, and what, it's so bizarre to me, dude. Like it just keeps happening. Like this Hollywood stuff just 
keeps unfolding. And people who you thought were like good, like Quentin Tarantino, who I mean, maybe there are signs there that like he has some weird thoughts just because of his movies. Mm-hmm. But people who are like personal heroes, yours, and that you looked up to, and like, man, they have such good performers, and I love this. They keep coming out. They like new, the other shoe keeps dropping, and all of these people. Yeah, it's really really frustrating. Yeah, and it also makes me a little bit paranoid. No, oh, I'm like, doesn't. I'm like, I'm like, who, who do I know? Who's next? Who do I know, Brian? That might be a big, pervy, dirty pervert. How dare you, Brian? <laughs> This is podcast stop being fun. <laughs> I don't I'm not enjoying myself anymore. <laughs> but really, Brian, who do I know? Is it me? Is it well, me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, let's get like we're a gaming podcast. We talk about gaming things. Mm-hmm. Tell me what gaming character you think would be like a Harvey Weinstein character. Okay, so hmm, I mean it. If we're going to profile. Oh, we're going to profile. Characters. Okay. Um, Harvey Weinstein, I would say is like a Bowser. <laughs> he, he's like bulky, hideous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of a turtle with like weird red hair. And I know no fault to genders or are, are sexy redheads out there, like male, female, everything. But in general, a lot of the populace hates you for some reason. And so you kind of have like this whole get up that's not really working. And Harvey Weinstein just kind of looks like a predator. He does. He like looks like he looks like he could have horns coming out of his back. You know, mm-hmm. like he looks kind of fucked up. Yeah. But um. No, I don't know. I just Bowser I think, definitely hits the list. Yeah, yeah. like he does look kind of high Harvey Weinstein. Like yeah. if you were to cast him, like in, in a remake of the 1990s hit Mario's Brother. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein for Bowser would be pretty close. Yeah. No, he's just he's seedy. He's also obviously always stealing some girl away to his castle. Like yeah. I know it's constantly Princess Peach, but let's be real here. Princess Peach is like signifi- signifying like every woman that's just gone up to Harvey Weinstein's uh, hotel room, you mm. know? She is like, oh, the 35th floor? Uh, I think I think this is a job interview. Oh, no, I'm Princess Peach. I don't want to give you a massage. Yeah. Mario, come and save me. Uh, do you think Luigi is Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh shit, maybe. I don't like, know. He knows what's going on. He goes, I don't know. My brother will take care of it. I don't know. Yeah. Things happen. These things yeah. happen. What about you? What are you like? Uh, who are you profiling here? I would take, honestly, like Revolver Ocelot from Metal Gear as someone you got to keep an eye on. Like someone maybe shouldn't keep around uh, the little boys. Just he's a little too flamboyant with his spinning of the revolvers all the time. And he's supposed to be like a deadly assassin. Uh-huh. But he has time to practice all these like fancy He's got f- lots of flourishes. Yeah, like who are you trying to impress? Because a grown man isn't impressed with that. A grown man looks at it like, all right, cool, dude. Did you shoot that thing? Does it, can you actually hit someone with it? But yet he just sits around and like practices all the time. Like what's he doing while he's practicing it? Looks like he's just like been like binge watching House of Cards. Why slipping his guns around? <laughs> you know, like that's, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's a safe person. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, What's next for so you? So you've got like Kevin Spacey. Yeah, he's like a Kevin Spacey. Like he's character. like the Kevin Spacey. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, then we also have the guys that just think it's okay because they're not touching anyone. Mm-hmm. They're not touching anyone. They're only whipping their private parts out and furiously masturbating and that you know that's that's not touching it's just it's just asking and then when you hear no you just do it anyway because you're not Mm -hmm. touching anybody so it's fine and then you just masturbate in front of people okay um which those are those are just those are those are called um Ooh. sexual predators like those are called people in the park that you run away from and call the police on 
The um, Pee Wee Hermans of the world. The Pee Wee Hermans of the world. You know, the Louis, in the more modern, uh, we've got <laughs> Louis C.K., you know? And I think if we're talking about that type of character, we're talking <laughs> solidly about a junk rat. Because when you think about junk rat, his his posture is already hunched over. Like he's re- he's reaching to grip something down below. You know, he's he's kind of got the shoulders where he's like moving forward and he's always grabbing balls. I mean, I know he's like throwing oh. bombs, but like those are round he has a problem he has a problem why is he hunched over all the time what's he reaching for down there where's that posture coming from (laughs) why oh yeah you like junk rat i love him (laughs) well everyone loves louis ck too god damn it you're breaking too many walls i'm sorry Uh, who else the only like i don't know kind of like the guy who like never takes no for an answer you know (laughs) Like he's always there and like showing up when he when you don't want him to be. Um Yeah, or he's like, Hey, can I kiss you? And you're like, No, no, you're my brother. And he's like, uh, just a little kiss. Oh. I just I just threw that out there. I'm trying to, you know, I'm getting say Donald Trump like character. Just he doesn't ask, he just goes in for what he wants. Yeah, he just, he just grabs in. whatever he wants. Um I'd go Sephiroth. From Final Fantasy VII, honestly. <laughs> okay. Like, no matter where you turn, Sephiroth just shows up. You're like, what are you doing here, bro? Like, I'm trying to get here with Eris, you know? We're trying to have a moment. And then the Sephiroth just, like, comes down because you can't take no. He kills her <laughs> with a big, long sword just because he's so jealous. Like, Sephiroth is always there. Yeah. So He I'm, kind of has that, like, hoity-toity, like, hoity-toity. I'm so good, I'm so, look at my long, luxurious yeah. locks. You can't deny this. You don't understand what I'm doing. I'm doing this for the good. You will like it later, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Like, Sephiroth is the guy who, like, sits on Facebook and is like, why don't women like me? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what, what am I'm I trying doing? to do. I'm so nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a nice guy. And they don't get what a creeper he actually is. Yeah. Uh, I brush my hair a thousand times, a thousand strokes per day. <laughs> no one can deny me. Yeah. I I see it. I see okay. it. Okay. Man, um, I feel like we just killed some really good pe- characters. I definitely though. can't pick Junkrat anymore. I just... You're going to see that posture. You're going to see that yeah. posture and you're going to go, what is he reaching for all the time? Why is it? Cover your eyes, kids. Just keep watching. Is it scoliosis or is it the pervy wanking hunchback? The, the wanking hunchback. I'm pretty sure that's on WebMD. <laughs> oh, the yeah. pervy wanking hunchback. I think that's an actual thing. I don't know. I haven't Googled it ever in my life, but it could. I believe it's probably on there. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I'll accept it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't even know where to go from here. We have to take a break. <laughs> yeah, we have to take a break. Um, all right, we're going to throw it to break real quick. When we come back, the good, the bad, the indie for the week. Um, we'll be right back, everyone. It's back to me, Snowmats. All right, thank you for uh, sitting through that break, Nomads. Welcome back to the show. Let's get into the good, the bad, the indie. The good, the bad, the indies, where we look through all the new releases in gaming and bring you our opinion on what games you should play, the ones you should avoid, and the indie games that you need to put on your radar. This episode, we're looking at games that were released between February 4th and February 10th. And let's start off with our good, the classic remake of Shadow of Colossus. Shadow of Colossus was developed by Blue Point Games, published by Sony Interactive. It is an action-adventure video game developed by Blue Point that takes place on the PS4. It is a remake of the original PlayStation 2 game using ultra-high definition art assets. The, re- the remake is led by Blue Point, who developed the earlier PS3 remaster with assistance from SIE Japan Studio. The developers remade the game with all the assets from the ground up, but the game retains the same gameplay from the original title aside from an introduction of a new control scheme. So what do you think about this Shadow is of our good. One of the things I have to say right off the bat is that we've never actually done a re-release. We've never mm-hmm. talked about a re-release on the the um 
the podcast before. But Shadow of the Colossus, when it first came out, was just a home run. I mean, people mm -hmm. that played it, the art style, the everything about it was just so unique and so beautiful. And it was so inventive that it felt like you weren't playing something for that time almost. And so it's not surprising that it's been revitalized a couple times over. Sure. Um, I, I guess like if we're talking about to people like, and Brian, I know you like, you've not played this before, but if we were trying to sell this to someone that's not played shadow of the Colossus in, in before some of the good points of this game are a hundred percent, the story you you don't have any villages to explore. You don't have any people to interact with. This is just you navigating through an environment to mm -hmm. find these colossi, to figure them out. It's almost more of a puzzle game because in order to defeat them, you have to figure out elements of these gigantic bodies. Right. I mean, gigantic bodies. The the They are the dungeon. The col colossus are gotcha. the dungeon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it is so... Lo it's a lonely landscape you're working to save um a uh i don't remember if she's a princess or just a girl you're trying to save a girl mm -hmm. um and it's but it's strikingly beautiful and the story without a lot of interaction with other people is emotional okay uh yeah i, I definitely have heard so much about this game there's kind of games that come out every once in a while within the industry that kind of send like a ripple effect through the entire industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, like Halo was one of the big ones, Call of Duty, and then when it comes to indie games like The Last of Us, and before that, The Shadow of the Colossus is one of the games I've heard about that just sends this huge ripple effect that like, have you played this game yet? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and like, another friend like, have you played this game yet? I'm like, no, nope, haven't done it. And yeah. you just feel bad about yourself for not playing these games. And so taking a look at this new remaster of it, I am absolutely blown away by what Blue Point's been able to do artistically. Uh, with all the modern ways that we do graphics now in gaming, it feels like a massive step forward artistically for the entire industry. This looks like an art piece. This doesn't look like a video game um, that you're just playing to solve things. It looks like it's an experience. It really is, though. And I think mm -hmm. that's the craziest thing about it is that you truly are like and it can, and, and they've done a, a bunch of work for this re-release. But I've got to say, like the very first game mm -hmm. was already so good that right. if, like I said, it felt like you were playing something that wasn't meant for that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't know. Also, another huge thing about uh, Shadow of the Colossus is the music is beautiful you are running through and fighting and these these gigantic beasts you're running through these these areas on your horse um who is your really only your only friend yeah. in this entire game and and you feel alone um and it's just it's and the music ties into all of that so perfectly this is a right. great game and so as far as a re-release like it needs to be noted as the good yeah, and like what what a game to be remade again. Like once before on the PS3 and now again on PS4. It's like the developer feels like this is a story that keeps being being need to retold to like newer generations. And so I think that speaks very well to um why you should be picking it up in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um let's get into the bad for the week. Kind of a awkward one for us. Yeah. The aptly named, uh quickly named, I should say. Runaway Boy. Runaway Boy, developed and published by Narco Games, released February 9, 2018. There is no plot in the game. You play as an ordinary Russian guy who runs away from people. You have to run as far as possible, collecting bottles. And the game you need to hold out until the next day and score 700 points. You, wanted, you are wanted by the police. Do not fall on their hands. What else do you want from a description? So the first thing about this game is that Brian and I found this and it was intended to be released this week. It looks mm -hmm. like they pulled that back, but here's what's also happened this week. So <laughs> it, within this week, when we found this, the title of this game was called Gay Run. Yep. And if you go and look this game up, you will find that there is a very like 
flamboyantly uh, running man. Um, the entire story was that you were running away because people were trying to kill you for being gay yep. and you were caught and you were going to be put in gay prison and the police were going to like maul you and all this crazy shit, all this yep. crazy shit. And you also liked putting bottles up your bunghole. And that was the premise of this story. Within You're not just this, collecting them? Not just collecting them. You are going to put them up your bunghole. Oh. And within this week, within this week, they have completely started changing everything about this game. What I think <laughs> has happened here, I'm not going to lie. Uh, what I think has happened here is that they probably put their game idea and everything out onto Facebook and it created a massive, interesting dialogue where everyone had very comprehensive and thoughtful conversation with one another. And everyone was like, what have we learned today? I've mm. learned a lot from these strangers. I've taken their thought processes in upon my own lifestyle and I'm questioning myself. Mm. And I think that 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 because we all know like Facebook Arguments and conversations always go really far with changing people's mind. So I have no doubt that uh, Gay Run has started to change and turn into a new leaf because of the advancement of Facebook conversation. We're all growing. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed that this game isn't called Gay Run because I think it's like was just completely encompass how bad the game was like it showed you right up front like runaway boy kind of feels a little bit more like oh maybe i will check out this game no nope, not from gay run because mm -hmm. i was when we found this thing i was simultaneously like disgusted and then impressed at what we do in the gaming world like that someone actually took the time to make this as a developer like <laughs> uh, uh, i don't i'm a little back and forth it really felt like the Flappy Bird for a less PC <laughs> generation or yeah. something. The way the dude's like just chass like uh, chasseing down the street or whatever, and his arms are just doing the windmill that's like so comical and uh -huh. cliche. And I can't believe they even posted it to Steam in the first place to try and get it out there. I I, I am impressed that they had the uh, uh, bravado to, to put that in front of the public. Like, no, this is good. We're going to do this. Right. I mean, this game doesn't deserve to like uh, get too much attention. It's it, it, their original description of it and everything was quite offensive. They're probably trying to tone it down because of how offensive that it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then and, and certain elements, is it like humorous? I don't know. It, the the song that they play is pretty badass. So I'm oh. not going to lie. It's got some pump up music that I could I could get. You know, if I worked out ever in my life, like I could probably work out to this yeah. music. When I'm you're taking the stairs. Yeah, the when stairs. I'm taking the stairs, I'm like, oh, I got to listen to this song. But yeah, in general, just a really shitty game, um, yeah. <clears throat> shitty concept. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like I said, like they've they were they started uh, changing their tactics on it. So, yep. <clears throat> All right. Next up, the indie for the week, Attack of the Earthlings. Developed by a team at Junkfish and published by Junkfish Limited, Attack of the Earthling combines turn-based <laughs> combat and stealth in a dark comedic single-player campaign where you, the player, take control of the native alien race to defend your home world from the invading humans. What are your initial impressions about uh, Attack of the Earthlings here? Uh, I think it's, it's just Attack of the Earthlings, for one, I love, I love the art style in this game. Mm -hmm. Um... I also am a big fan of strategy games. I, it yeah. just feels solid. Um, the developer team Junkfish has has put out some fun things in the past, and I, I feel like this is going to be similar. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a, it's a solid. We we actually we were looking at a couple of different indies for the week, and this mm -hmm. one just good week. We yeah, it was it was a great week for indies, and this one kind of like took uh, center stage. Definitely. Um like you said, the art, the art style is just comical. It kind of has like an XCOM feel a little bit. But yeah, it does. Yeah, I don't think it's going to play the same way as it. Uh, I, I love the aspect of how the Earthlings are the one that you're defending against. Uh, what's a, just a funny tone to take in a game. Um, kind of a Twilight Zone twist on what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for this game. I haven't played a strategy game in a while. I, I missed out on the whole... Um, was a zombie game that everyone was playing just a little bit ago. Uh, they are billions. Yes, I missed out on that one. I definitely don't want to miss out on this one because it feels 
like a few people are going to be checking out and talking about it. I'm excited for Attack of the Earthlings. I haven't played a strategy game in a long time. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it, it is a little bit of a higher price point. It's priced at twenty four ninety nine, but oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, like I said, I, I feel like it's going out for one. You're not dealing with early access here. Um, mm -hmm. For two, um, it's it's kind of a proof. Like it's it's a pretty game. You can just tell that it's going to be well rounded. So um, yep. and and the the premises is, is entertaining. Definitely. All right, that's the good, the bad, and the indie for the week. And that's going to do it for episode 46 of the Backspace Nomads. Thanks for hanging out with us. If uh, you want to check us out and engage with us, BackspaceNomads.com or on Twitter at Backspace Nomads. If you're a YouTube watcher and you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And for all the audio listeners on Apple, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, uh, rating, review, and subscribing is the best way to support the podcast. We really appreciate if you guys get out there and help us out that way. Uh, and we appreciate all the support we've already been getting. So thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Uh, Much that's good luck to you. You're our Valentine. Ah, how exciting! <laughs> we'll see you guys for episode forty-seven uh, later, Nomads. Bye.